Hallelujah. And welcome through our precious, precious Lord Jesus Christ. My name is Brian Mason, and this is the third part of the Bible study on strong in faith, giving glory to God. Those wonderful words from Romans chapter 4 and verse 20. And who did they refer to? They referred to Abraham, who became Abraham. He staggered not the promise of God, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. And are we strong in faith in these days? When? All around us it might seem it's darkness. It might seem that the God of this world is having a field day. But no, he is utterly and completely defeated. Because the Holy Ghost within the believer is stronger than all the millions of demons and devils that seek to be at work against the kingdom of God and against the gospel going to every creature. Yes, do you know your position? Your position in Christ? Because when he became victor, those whom he indwells by his Spirit are equally victors in him, on fire for him, on fire for Almighty God. Are you staggering not to the promise of God in these days? Because the promise is fulfilled through the Son of God. The promise was given by the Almighty God himself to Abraham. Now I continue going over perhaps some what I went over yesterday, but that doesn't matter from the 15th verse of Genesis and the first verse. After these things the word of the Lord came unto Abram in a vision, saying, Fear not, Abram, I am thy shield and thy exceeding great reward. Fear not, Abram, and fear not, body of Christ at this time because the Almighty is still the same. I am the Lord, I change not, says his word. Get a grip of his word, take hold of it and believe God for whom he is. And Abraham said, Lord God, what wilt thou give me? Nothing here of a selfish request of the pampered, so-called Christianity of these days. Give me this, give me that, give me the other. Centered on self, it's an abomination in the sight of a holy God and to his ears. Blast upon it, O God, this selfishness which dares to call itself Christianity, and is not, it's from the very pit of hell itself, because it's a devil who is so selfish, and creates that selfish spirit of his own, within those who are not Christ. And what did, what did Abraham ask for? It was for what? It was for God himself. And for God's purposes and plan and covenant to be fulfilled. Seeing I go childless. And the steward of my house. Is this Eliezer of Damascus. Eliezer. He was not of the covenant promise. Because the covenant promise was what? To be through Abraham. Which meant. It had to be through a son of Abraham, one that Abraham was the father of. And Abraham said, Behold to me, thou hast given no seed, 
as clear as clear as be to God, but God knew all about it. Was God taken by surprise? And God is not taken by surprise in these days either. He knows all about it. That the evil one is doing his utmost through this European Union. That organization of Lucifer himself. How to deceive. How to destroy. And God has not lost control. Neither will he lose control. Because he is the almighty God. He needs us though. To believe him. And not try to come with our own solutions. We see in this account. That before. Abraham had the son of promise. He spent years becoming older. Years when he tried to come with an own solution. Or his wife Sahari came with her own solution. But that solution was not of God. Because it was not the son of promise. Behold to me thou hast given no seed. Yes, he given no seed. Because why? He was not in the right, right frame as it were. Because he had to come into line with God's own plan. Are you in line with God's own plan? Body of Christ, remnant, are you in line with God's plan for these days? And that plan to pull down and pull down and pull down the strongholds of Satan and the abomination, which is that European Union at this time, the old revived filthy pagan, unbelieving and against Christianity, Roman Empire, and behind it, the very Lucifer himself, the devil Satan, throw the church of Rome with all its unbelief, with all its how to destroy the work of God, that God will not be destroyed. Work will not be destroyed because he is finding faith in these days and in the most unlikely places. Faith outside of the European Union because God is calling ones outside of the European Union to pray, to destroy the works of the devil. Through the lies, the schemings of the new world order. Because it's from the pit of hell itself. Filled with him who is lies. Filled with him who is set upon destroying and destroying and destroying. But he cannot, he will not, he, he shall not. Whereas there is still the Holy Ghost. At work through those in whom he lives and has the same power in these days as he had in the day of Pentecost. And behold the word of the Lord. That's what it is in these days. It's the word of the Lord, not the word of man, the word of God came unto him, saying, This shall not be thine heir, but he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir. That was as clear, as clear, as clear could be. And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven, 
and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them, number the stars. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. What a promise! The promise of the one, the creator himself, the sustainer himself, because he even sustains the evil ones on earth. You humanists, he sustains you, even though you deny him. You will not have a breath within you unless he sustained you. And, he, and what, what did Abraham do? He believed in the Lord. And he counted it to him for righteousness. He believed. And the moment you believe, God will act. But it's believing on his promises. It's believing in, in line with his plan. And his plan is where? It's in this book. It's not in the Vatican. It's here according to what God says. Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that what believeth shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be what? Condemned. So you, you in the church of Rome, those who will not believe, you're condemned according to the book. You in the European Union, with your humanism, with looking to wipe out Christianity, looking to wipe out the Bible truths, you are condemned in your unbelief, and the Lord Almighty will sweep you aside and pull down your abomination of what? Of the, of the Tower of Babel. You are the Tower of Babel. And the Tower of Babel. He dealt with it. And he's dealing with you now. Now, Abraham had received that promise. But yet did we see he believed it straight away. No. Oh. Why? Because his wife, Sarai, he listened to her. Oh, she may have sounded convincing. He looked at his own situation. Remember, what was he at this time? So he like, at least 75, had not gone a bit older. And he looked, and he looked, and thought, no, I can't see any way. Can't see any way of my wife, Sahari, having a wife, uh, having a child either. Let's turn to the 16th chapter of Genesis, in chapter 1. Now, Sarai, Abraham's wife, bear him no children. That's very clear, very definite. And she had an handmaid, an Egyptian whose name was Hagar, an Egyptian. She wasn't in the line. The line had to be a pure line. Abraham and his wife, Sarai. No one else. But Sarai said unto Abraham, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abraham hearkened to the voice of Sarai. Oh, let us be clear in these days. Let us listen to the voice of the Lord. Not to the voice of, of man. Not to the voice of politicians. Not to the voice of that which calls itself Christianity and church. And is what? Does it have an ounce of the life of Jesus Christ within it? Because 
Unless you've been born again, you can be the Archbishop of Canterbury, you can be a bishop. But unless you've been born again of the Spirit of God, unless your sin has been dealt with and repented of, and been washed and cleansed through the blood of Jesus Christ, you're still in the kingdom of the devil, Satan himself. It's being born into the kingdom of God because you can't receive the things of God unless you've been born into his kingdom. Unless God himself is living within you. But maybe that's, yes, maybe. Oh, the voice said, maybe. But it wasn't. It was the wrong way. It wasn't God's way. God would take many years. He would be patient and take them right to the place where they've, it was totally impossible to have a, have a son between them. And Abraham hearkened, yes, he hearkened, but he hearkened incorrectly. And Sarai, Abraham's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt, what, ten years in the land of Canaan and gave her to her husband Abram to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarah said unto Abram, my wrong be upon thee, she saw that she had done wrong. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, Thy maid is in thy hand, do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when I, Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. But we know that God was merciful. And although Ishmael was born, God, in his mercy, did use Ishmael. Isaac was to be the son of promise, the one through whom all the promises of God would come down, come down his line. Let us move on still further to chapter 17 and verse 1. The years have gone by. The situation of Abraham and Sarai has become more and more humanly impossible to have the son of promise. And when Abraham was ninety years old and nine, my, he'd moved much older now, much feebler, much weaker. His natural functions were no longer what there to, to, to con for the conception of between him and his wife to have a son. But that was God. God taking them to their extremity. Their they were absolute extremity. But here he was again, the God of covenant promise coming to Abraham. The Lord appeared to Abraham. He wasn't in a hurry. And said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. And I will make my covenant between me and thee. And will mighty multiply thee exceedingly. The promise had not failed, it had not changed. God was still there confirming his promise to his servant. And Abraham fell on his face 
And God talked with him, saying, Fell on his face. He knew that he was in the presence of the Holy One. Nothing flippant or familiar there. But acknowledging God to be God. As for me, behold, my covenant is with thee. Yes, I, yes, Abraham. You might be much, much older since I first appeared to you and told you to get out of your land. You might be much older than when I appeared to you and spoke about my covenant promise. You tried to do things brought about the solution your own way, the fulfillment your own way. But you've, you haven't succeeded. And I've made it so impossible for you to do it. But I still promise in you. This is it. Not looking at outward circumstances. Not looking that the enemy, those who want to keep within Europe, as it were, let's apply the word of God to situations. It might seem that they have the resources. It might seem that everything seems to be going absolutely so well for them. But God himself intervened with Abraham. And God himself will intervene in the situation of the United Kingdom. When there is that believing that he will do it. And behold, my covenant is with thee, and thou shalt be a father of what many nations? Neither shall thy name any more be called Abraham. Thy name shall be called Abraham. For a father of many nations have I made thee. That's the word of God to his servant. Many nations. And I will make thee exceedingly fruitful. And I will make nations of thee, and kings shall come out of thee. Remember the Tower of Babel? That rebellious spirit. Looking to be like the Most High. And the modern day equivalent the European Union looking to be like the Most High. But the covenant promise is still there. The covenant promise that out of every kindred, tribe and nation will come those who will worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. Washed and cleansed through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, the eternal Son of God. And that's where it was starting. The down the line which would come through Abraham, Isaac, the son of promise, would lead to the Lord Jesus Christ coming to be the Saviour of all those who will believe in him and accept him as their saviour. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee. It was two way. And thy seed after thee, those following through Isaac, in their generation from, for what? An everlasting covenant. A covenant which would not be broken by God. To be a God unto thee and to thy seed after thee. And I will give thee and to thy seed after thee the land wherein thou art a stranger. All the land of Canaan for an everlasting possession. I will be their God. And the promise is still there today. 
I will be their God. But it's two way coming and saying to God, You are my God. You've provided that way to yourself through the blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. The one who is the way, the truth, and the life. And God said unto Abraham, Thou shalt keep my covenant. Therefore thou and thy seed after thee in their generations keep in the covenant. United Kingdom, are you keeping the covenant with God? Are you, is he still your God? He's reaching out to you. It's up to you to answer and call upon his name whilst he is still there to be called upon. Father, thy word is so clear. Thy word is still alive today. Thy word is there to be spoken out and thy word is there to be believed. And just as Abraham believed thy covenant promises, after he had failed, but you gave him another opportunity. Now, O oh God, Father, grant the United Kingdom the opportunity to come back to thee and for thine armies to drive away those millions of demonic spirits and devils that are all over covering the United Kingdom that thine army is greater than them. Blast upon them, O God, and that thy servant here believes thee and believes thy word that there is greater power either by the Holy Spirit within me than all those millions of devils and demons. And through the name of Jesus and the power of his blood and resurrection, blast them away, O oh God, now on the basis of of the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. If ye abide in me, my words abide in you. Ye shall ask what ye will, and it shall be done unto you. Amen.